And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm taking a look at Praetor, or Praetor. Um, this is a game in which you are building a city and getting victory points. It's essentially a very Euro game where you're going to be taking lots of resources and using those, and you'll be placing workers. But in this case, the workers are dice, and the dice pips on the die show the amount of experience that that worker has. Let's take a closer, brief overlook of the game. As you can see, there's a lot of pieces in the game, but um, we'll talk over here. There is this is a scoring track. It's made up of two boards, and essentially, whoever is the farthest ahead each turn on the scoring track is going to go last. And so you'll pick turn order. Turn order for the game is important. Here is the city. Now the city is made up of different tiles, and the tiles change based on the number of players. This is for a five-player game. Each player has a disc on one of these cities. That shows that you control it, uh, on one of these gold mines, I mean, in the city. And there's three other buildings that nobody owns. Above here, we have some buildings that people can buy. And as the game progresses, you'll have more out there, equal to the number of players, plus one. Now, players are going to be getting points in various ways, and they're going to be doing that by sending their workers out. You start the game with workers, and workers are dice. You have a bunch of guys here who can become workers. And you have a bunch of guys, you have three active workers. Each of them has experience, one, two, or three experience. You also start with a bunch of resources and a pile of discs, and you have a morale track here. Morale is important. Different things will increase or decrease your morale over the game. And at the end of the game, wherever the morale token is, you will gain or lose that many points. Now on a player's turn, and players will keep going until everyone has passed, they can do two basic things. They can send one of their workers out to activate a building. So let's say I go to this building here. It's my gold mine, and I get three gold for going there. If this building had been in the mix, um, I would have gotten three wood for going there, three wood pieces. Basically, you get something equal to the, number, the experience of the guy you sent out. That's not always the case. Some things, like for example, sending a guy here gives you another worker. And when you get another worker, you are going to place him here, and at the end of your turn he'll move here, and then he'll move over here and you have another worker to work with. So that's different ways to get workers. Um, players also have the opportunity, you can see right here, uh, building the wall. There is a wall tile, and this costs a certain number of resources, and when you build it you get that many points. However, in the future, you flip it over, in the future there's one wall tile available each turn. Whoever builds the wall tile will get the points on the wall tile plus whatever's in the back of any wall tile they've already done. So you can see if you let one person build all the wall tiles, they're going to start getting a ton of points from those. Um, players can also build a tile. To build a tile, you simply look at the tile and what are the resources to build it? This one needs one wood, four stone, and a marble. Whoever builds it is going to get nine points. And when they build it, they're going to attach it to the city pretty much wherever they want. And you will get bonus points for each corner that you match. So I'm looking here, and I'm not actually seeing any spots in the city where this corner will match. So let's pretend I built this one instead. All right, so I build this tile down here. And it gives me three victory points. It costs two gold, two wood, and stone to build. It gives me three. And I matched one corner up here with this green and green, and they're different patterns for those who are colorblind. And so I get an additional point for that. And now I will place one of my tokens on to show that I own it. Anytime someone uses it for the action, I'm going to get a bonus. In this case, I'm going to get a bonus of a marble every time someone uses it. And so the, using other people's buildings can be problematic, uh, but at the same time, you want to build buildings so people use yours. So essentially this is going to go on and on. Every time at the end of a turn after one passes, your workers come home and they go up in experience. 
Um, some buildings don't cause them to go up experience, like these blue buildings here, but most of the buildings, or if you build a building, you go up in experience. Once you go up to experience six, you retire, and you're placed in the retirement section down here. Now, there is actually a building that lets you use retired workers, but for the most part, you want to retire workers because the, the phase that you retire workers in, whether you're in phase one or two, that, that depends on the buildings that are being placed at the board, you're going to score victory points. So in phase one, you get 12 points every time you retire someone, you get eight points. But at the same time, every time you retire somebody, you're out of worker and then you have fewer workers to place out. This will continue until the end of the game, at the end of the game, um, which you will also do some more scoring. Like let's say I have these two active workers, a two and a five, I would get seven extra points. And you would also take all your extra resources that you have and divide those by 10 and get that many points. Most points is the winner of the game. There's some really cool concepts in this game. I enjoy the fact that the workers get experience and they eventually retire, which makes you get new ones and you got to train those. And so you have this balance between getting them to retire quickly, which gets you a lot of points. Um, because if even in the round two, when you retire somebody, you get eight points. The most you can get for an active worker is five. And even then they're about to retire. Uh, so it's good to retire them. But at the same time, if you don't retire them, you can use them more often. The game has uh, this every turn, you have to pay for all your retired and your active workers. You have to pay a gold each time. And I'm, I'm so over that mechanism. I'm tired of this thing where every turn you have to pay and pay. I pay enough taxes in real life. I don't understand why people who design games think that's fun, but whatever. The one, there's two issues I have with this game. Now, I, I wanna make it clear, I do not dislike the game. I think the idea of owning a building and having other people go on it and the, and, and the options of building buildings, getting resources, building the wall tiles, I think that's there, there's a lot of cool different options. But there's two problems. One, the spatial element is ridiculous. It doesn't really matter where these tiles are put down in the city except when you first place them and then you're matching corners. That makes no thematic sense at all, these different corners. And it, 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 it adds this, oh, well, where do I put it element to the game, which is completely superfluous, doesn't add that many points to the game, and it just, to me, it's one big waste of time. I would have, if I was the editor, I would have got to that part and said, we're cutting that. It doesn't make any sense. Why even have this in a game? Just build a city. What does it matter? I mean, it doesn't matter if this building's next to this building, except for when those corners match. That's silly. The other is this. There are clearly tiles that are better than others, and after several playings, I, I can't make any kind of um, definitive you know, statements here, but it feels like some tiles are extremely powerful. There's one tile called the, the, well, let me show you this tile here, okay? This tile here is a monument. When you build this monument, it does nothing for you except gives you 19 points. Well, that's really cool. I really like that tile, and that's neat. I have always, there's lots of games that have that in it. But there's this tile here, and when you build this one, it gives you seven points, okay? No big deal. This is the Temple of Mercury. When you go in a Temple of Mercury, when you use it as an action, you get two points for every white and black cube that you have, for every marble and weapons that you have. So let's say you have six marble and six weapons. That's 12 times two, you get 24 points when you go there. And then you don't have to give those up. So once people figure out just how powerful this is, people start hoarding the white and black cubes. You don't need to build stuff, just get a bunch of cubes, go to this building and score a vuku amount of points. You can get 50, 70 points from going on this thing because you're collecting tons of resources and then just jumping on this thing to get lots of points. While the guy who, here he spent three white and four black to get 19 points. While if he had gone to this tile, he would have scored 14 points and still kept his resources. Now I read online and the designer said that maybe a maximum should be put on this. You think? You think? Um, now, he said that, well, the, the fact, and then he also explained that this game, if you take that and you get that many points, then you will go last and you won't get to choose it in the future. But that brings me to another problem, the forced tile. It's like, well, I have to go here. I don't have many whites and blacks, I'm doing something else, but I have to put a worker here to stop John from going here so he doesn't score 40 points. And I don't like games that force you to block other people with no benefit to yourself. Now, it sounds like I'm really down on this game, and I'm not. Like I said, I like the different resource back and forth. I like the workers and the retirement thing. And the, the, while the, the placement thing is an annoyance, it doesn't actually really affect the game. I just think it's just superfluous additions. 
The tiles though, there's also a market tile where you can go and trade resources which almost makes many of the other tiles superfluous and in fact the rules tell you in advanced game maybe you shouldn't use it. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, but I really feel like these tiles are too far off the skew. Some tiles are just not nearly as good as others. There's also gray tiles in the game um, that anybody can use. You don't actually have to go to them to use them, which is an interesting concept. Like one of them lets you use a retired worker, but it does make for some confusion as to how that works exactly. Um, it's, it's a solid game, with the exception of I'm not sure that everything is balanced. And I think I'm going to lean towards not recommending it because of that. Now, maybe after you play a lot more than I did, you can figure out the things. But I think a lot of people are going to play this, find some really powerful tiles, and either get messed over by them or do really well with them and come away with a bad taste in their mouth. Cool artwork, you know, the cool idea of the workers going up. I just don't know that this one shines in a field full of really good worker placement games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.